spear and he pulled him down to the floor. Luckily, the knife fell. And he started trying to twist his head 360 degrees around. A sure way to kill someone. As he's trying to twist this little kid's head around, trying to strangle him, Abraham looks at him and with such anger in his eyes, he starts punching him and strung back. Until the guy takes Abraham and he whammed him in the eye with a rock or something. And for the rest of Abraham's life, he had a black eye. Even when he was in his 60s, one part of his face was dark blue. I've seen pictures, but you know, even though he whammed Abraham and he gave him that blow, that scar for life, blackening one of his eyes, and later on, there was even health problems. He wasn't able to see from that. But you know, uh, Nathan, as he hit Abraham, Abraham, even though he was filled with pain, but he had one power, one strength that Abdul didn't have. And of course, that's the strength we have. Hashem owes La'amo Yitain. Hashem's our strength. And right then, Abraham took him and as he embraced the guy's head, he turned. And Avram was a very strong kid. I saw pictures of him in his youth. He was like a chubby, heavy set guy. Looks like he can push a bridge over. And right then, he took him and he punched him and punched him. And little Avraham, a mere, what, 12 year old, killed Abdul. Abraham did not feel bad because he just did a big mitzvah. The mitzvah says, If someone tries to kill you, especially a guy, you're allowed to kill in self-defense. And right there, yeah, it is. The Mishnah says to do that. So you know what? Right then, as he knocked him over, Abraham started running back home. And when his mother saw his bloody black eye, she said, Ah, 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 my son, Abba, what happened? And he wasn't sure if he should tell her the whole story or just the, the part about him. But somehow, he told her, Ma, don't worry. Abdul's not going to threaten and harass any more Jewish children ever again. His mother said, that's so nice. Why? He said, because he's dead. <laughs> she said, that's right, Ma. I finished him off. <laughs> she starts screaming. He says, Ma, you should have heard him screaming. She says, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. What my son? What my son? <laughs> She goes and she calls her husband, Abraham's father, nice man, his name was Eliyahu. Eliyahu! What's that? Eliyahu hears and he's so proud of his little son. <laughs> and she's fanatic. She's nervous. And she says, but what if, what if, what if the Arabs, what if the Arabs family and their extended family search him down? What if Chas Shalom, they come looking for him? Oh my gosh! When Yaakov's son killed Laban Levi and, and Shimon killed Shechem, Yaakov was so angry. That's that the way a Jew acts? But he said, Mommy, there Shechem wasn't threatening to kill the Shvatim. But here he was threatening to kill and he was. He was hurting people and he, was, he almost killed your son. And he probably would have. She said, Avram! Stay under the bed. Albert, get under the bed. Don't come out. Stay there. She said, Ma, my bed is so small. She said, you're staying there. I don't care for a week or two at least. He can barely fit under the bed. He's a chubby guy. He's sitting there under the bed. The bed's like moved up on top of him. <laughs> and as he's there, he's bored stiff, feeling the boards of the bed. And he's there one day. She brings him food and she's crying, she's screaming. She can't believe it. He says, Ma, you should have seen it. <laughs> up your mind. <laughs> up your mind. 
says, Ma, I'm telling you, he was going to kill me for sure. His mother was shaking. Every time she brought him the food, she'd spill it on the floor. And as she brought him the food, she brought it to him. Little Avram would always smile and say, Cheer up, Ma, look at all the good I did for the community. Now go back to Yeshiva. And she'd say, Shh, I don't want anyone to know you're here. And every time someone knocked on the door, whether it was the milkman or the mailman, she was scared. Who is it? Who is it? Is it somebody that's, uh, that's, uh, is it somebody that's an Arab? And she'd, she'd at first pretend no one's home so she could look. They had a crack in the door, very small. It wasn't there on purpose, by the way. And she would look, and then she would open. Living in fear and terror and dread, what would happen if they avenged the death of Abdul? But after a couple of days, she started thinking to herself, you know, I heard a lot of things about that guy. He was a very dangerous man. I heard that he even attacked older Jewish women. And you know what? You know, maybe my son, maybe my son had no choice. And who knows, it probably would have been my son or him. And after the third day, she wasn't so strict anymore. She said, you can come out from under the bed. <laughs> and Avram gets up. His body feels like a stick, you know. Comes out of the bed. He says, Ma, I can't bend my back. And his mother says, listen, that should be the least of your problems. And he says, but Ma, can I just go outside? I need fresh air. How do you like being under a bed for two weeks? <laughs> he says, Ma, I need fresh air. So his mother said, Okay, soon. As soon as it was soon, he took out out the window, instead of the door. I guess it was a way of checking less attention. And as he climbs out the window and he starts heading outward, he goes outside. And as he goes outside, his mother is wondering. He goes over to the store. He goes... He goes to the store, and as he goes to the store, it wasn't a uh, real store. It was like a little peddler selling nuts and candy. And in the olden times, the kids didn't really eat candy. They ate nuts. It tastes good, pistachios, cashews. He went over to the nut vendor, and he said, here, fill up my bag. And as the man looked at him, he said, Albert, I'll give you a bigger bag than that. And he went, and he filled up this sack, like a potato sack, a big sack. Big sack, filled with nuts, all kinds of assorted. He said, take it, Albert. I'm so proud of you, of your courage and your gut, how you killed Abdul. <laughs> how do you know? He says, Abraham, who doesn't know? He says, what do you mean? I did like Moshe. I looked around, no one was around, and I let the guy have it. Didn't Moshe do that when the Mitri was killing a Jew? And he says, don't worry, we all know about it, and we're so proud, and that's why, here, take all of this. When Albert walks in, he has this big bag of nuts, about the size of a wholesaler's, uh, you know, uh, sack. He turns to him, and he says, she says, Albert, what are you doing? He says, Ma, you said I can go out soon, so I went out soon. And the guy gave me all this because he said, he thanks me for getting rid of Abdul. She said, what? Other people know about it? Now you're in great danger. Elio! Right away. Send Albert. Send them to France. Morocco and France are neighbor, neighboring countries. Send them to France. I'll be away. I'm staying close. And send them. Send them to France. Where he can go. And he can escape the danger of being found out about. And who knows? Of being killed. When his um, when his mother heard this, when when he heard this from his mother, he said, "Ma, I'm not even by mitzvah. You want to send me away?" She says, "What's wrong? It's your life that I'm worried about, son. Of course I'll miss you, but I think it's very important." He said, "But ma, you want me to be golel makom Torah to go out of my home to learn Torah?" And she said, "Yes." Have you gone to the Makom Torah? You're supposed to. 
told him. She told him. And by the way, I'm sure if you go to France, soon in a couple of years, I can send for you to come back home. As soon as the Arabs forget what happened to Abdul. And she said, don't worry, they'll forget soon, because they're not here. They don't care for each other. I'm sure we care for each other. Don't worry, it won't be long. And as he got on the boat, right around that time, his mother had a new baby boy. His name was Don. He barely saw the sun. He looked at his brother, Don, and he said, Ma, all right, I'm going. Abba, are you going to visit me in France? He said, Abba, we'll miss you, but you know what? Right. And um, hopefully we'll send for you as soon as we can. But you know what, Albert? When you go there, try as hard as you can to become a Tamil Chacham. And I promise you, you'll never have to worry about making money or taking care of yourself. When someone learns Torah well, Hashem sends special angels to take care of it. And he said, Abba! When should I come? His father said, I don't know yet. I'll write you. But just remember, the elder. The boat was already pulling out. His father wanted to tell him a last message, but the boat was already starting to, to set sail. The steam was coming. The angels were being pulled up. And he said, wait, Albert. He said, Abba, I have to go. Abba, I'm right. He said, but remember, I mean it. You'll need to be protected. In the sea and in the other country, there's an anti Semitic country. France is very cruel, very mean to the Jews. And you know what? If you, if you want to be protected, remember what El Yoranavi said. <laughs> what, what did he say? And he didn't have time to tell us some what El Yoranavi said. But he said, look at his book, Tanad Valio. In the book of El Yoranavi, and he told him a certain chapter. And I promise, as soon as he got on the boat, he was looking if they have the sefer, but no one had a sefer. On the boat, everyone was eating delicious meals. But Abraham would pull out of his bag a can of food, a can of food. Everyone eating all these delicious food. And he's sitting there. And everyone looking at him, are you okay? Why don't you eat with that? He says, oh, because it's not kosher, but I'll be okay. He's all looking at him. He's such a great kid, you know? You might say no one else is on the boat. You is you watching. No, he's sitting there on the table. Everyone's sitting with their suits, eating elegant, and he's sitting with a can of beans. I guess he knew a little bit more about life than kids do today. And you know what? As he was eating, he finally got there off the boat, and as he got to France, the yeshiva was called Ex Lebed. Ex Lebed was the name of the yeshiva because that was the name of the town in France where it was situated. It's still there today. And my father went to, and Abraham went to Ex Lebed. And he got into the yeshiva. And right away he looked for the son of the man. You know, what do we want to be supposed to say about, about this? And as he reads, it says like this If you learn Mikra, Kumash, Hashem sends one angel to protect you for each word. When you learn Mishnah, Hashem sends bigger angels. And when you learn Gemara and Halakha, Hashem says, you won't need angels, I'll protect you myself. And he said, that must be what my father said. That the more I learn, the better it'll be. He went into the yeshiva and everyone was taller than him. He was a little kid walking around. People thought he was related to someone and he was just visiting. But I told the rabbi, no, here's a letter from my father. I from Montenegro. That you should accept me in your yeshiva. And they looked at him and they said, well, You're too young in the yeshiva. We, our boys are much older. 15, 16, 17. What are you? 12, 13? He said, What's the difference? I, I, I can't lose by being in the yeshiva. So they accepted him. And before you knew it, it was five long years where Albert grew in the yeshiva very great. He knew tremendous amount of Torah. And to make a little extra money on the side, because his parents couldn't send it to him, he used to offer to clean the bathrooms in the yeshiva, to clean the showers, to clean the mikveh, the back. It used to give him enough money to buy clothing and refreshments. And he was there, you wouldn't believe.